fire trucks. They're huge and loud, and they save your crap from burning down. They've been highly specialized vehicles ever since they were invented. But what are these things built on? What's all inside there? Well, put on your fireproof suits, boys and girls. We're going little hose to big hose, compartment to compartment to compartment, bumper to bumper on this Pierce Arrow XT fire engine. Fire trucks are totally unique machines, and current day fire trucks are extremely customizable. Everything from the chassis and cab size to your typical engine and transmission options. Today, we're gonna look at how the Oxnard California Fire Department configured their newest fire engine to serve their mostly urban territory. The particular fire engine we're looking at is what's known as a pumper, and it has its own onboard water tank along with a whole lot of other tools and equipment that we'll get to shortly. A fire engine like this will be in service for about 13 to 15 years. Overall, the Pierce Arrow XT is a thick, wide boy, but at 95 inches, it's actually one of the narrower models. The steering can do a 45 degree cramp angle. What's a cramp angle, you ask? Uh, well, it's apparently the maximum wheel angle at full steering lock. Better cramp angle makes it more maneuverable and able to get through tighter spaces, a good thing for an engine on city duty. It even has four wheel independent suspension to give it a better ride. The frame rails are made from 120 KSI steel and are over 13 inches wide for increased chassis strength and good handling. Good for its size, at least. It's a fire engine. It has a healthy 15 inches of ground clearance in case it needs to climb over any debris or debris in its way. And uh, it's also red. But if I do this, now it's yellow. It's called graphical effects. I don't know. <laughs> all right, you see that panel over there with all the things on it? Let's go look at it. It's called the pump panel. This truck carries 500 gallons of water and 20 gallons of foam on board. And I talked to the fire captain and he said that's about enough water for four minutes of spraying. Any more than that, and they gotta hook up to a fire hydrant, which they do with this right here. So this is something crazy I learned today. Not every fireman is a firefighter. Let me explain. On this engine, there are three crew members. You got the engineer who runs this pump and drives the truck. You got the captain who strategizes how they're gonna put out the fire. And then you got the firefighter himself, who is more of a workhorse, does kind of a little bit of everything. Okay, so a fire engine gets to a fire. The firefighter hops out, he's grabbing one of these hoses, he's running in, he's got four minutes to do what he's gotta do. In the meantime, the engineer who is driving the truck here gets out, he has to find the nearest fire hydrant, connect one of the big ass hoses in the back to this inlet here. He turns on the pump, he makes sure there's water flowing everywhere. But to do that, he's also gotta come in here and do hand calculations on this spreadsheet to make sure that the firefighter and the captain have enough water to do their job. Then, after he's done that, he's probably gonna hop in there too and get, get it done. I thought this thing carried like eight dudes. There's three dudes per fire engine. That's crazy. The engineer has all the information he needs. He's got the engine RPM. Uh, he's got a digital water uh, level gauge right here. But if that fails, there's also a very old school water gauge right here that can tell him exactly how much water is in his tank just by looking at this clear piece of glass. But not all fires are best fought with plain old H2O, and the fire department has to be prepared to fight any kind of inferno. So in addition to the onboard water, this pumper also carries 20 gallons of foam to help put out hydrocarbon fires, boat fires, or stubborn cardboard debris and trash fires. The engineer is able to change how much foam goes into the water mix with this panel right here. He can do it on the fly. And of course, big red buttons are very important. This one operates the air horn on the truck. If the chief gives the order for all the firefighters to get the heck out, the engineer hits this for 10 seconds, they gotta go. Speaking of going, let's go look at all the compartments. Maybe I can find a hose to use. Everything on this truck has a very specialized and specific place, so any fireman in the department can quickly find what they need. Hey, <laughs> these are all the tools that you would probably need to either uh, forcefully get into a house like this, whoa, 
flat back axe and um, this other tool, which I guess is more of an old school East Coast thing. You can pry doors open. On 90% of uh, structure fires that the, this engine responds to, they use this stuff. I'll just, uh, come on. Nope, that's not how that goes. Other way, Nolan, other way. So yeah, you got your shovels, you got a big drywall hook to tear walls down with. Something weird I thought that they had was uh, these big old squeegees, right? They got these big old squeegees just in case like a sprinkler system breaks indoors. The fire department can quickly clean it up with this thing. That's pretty cool. Come on, everyone's favorite tool. If I can get it out. I mean, what more do I have to say? It's an ax. I feel so cool with this. Right here is the engineer's SCBA or self-contained breathing apparatus. So the dude's done working the pumps. He can hop into the fire if he needs to. Um, there's also extra oxygen tanks in this compartment here. Another interesting feature, bunch of tarps down here. If your furniture hasn't burned up, they'll actually group it all together, cover it with these tarps to keep it safe. They also have tarps to put on your floors and carpets so they don't mess it up when they're walking around. I think that's very courteous of them. All right, now that we've seen the driver's side of the truck, let's go to the rear, check out what's back there. All right, from top to bottom on the back here, of course, we've got the hoses. The one in the middle here is what the fire engine uses to connect to a fire hydrant. These big boys can uh, pump 250 gallons of water per minute. On either side, we've got high-rise hoses. Have you ever like taken the stairs in a big building instead of the elevator? You see those big water connectors? Yeah, that's what these guys hook to. It's so firefighters can put out a fire on like the eighth floor of a building. It's very useful. They can also be linked together in case the firefighter needs more hose. Probably the workhorse or work hose, if you will, of the fire engine is this rubber hose in the back. They use this hose for vehicle fires and for wildfires that are on the side of a freeway. Uh, it can self retract, it's just very useful. Uh, Captain told me that they probably use this one the most just because it's so convenient. Ooh, that's a nice noise. Another cool old school feature on the back here is this button that lets the engineer know to stop if you're hanging on the back. They don't really do that anymore, ride back here, but it's just cool that that's still there. Another cool thing is these big bearings right here, so you can use that rubber hose without catching on the truck. And of course, every big truck needs a rear view camera, which they have right there. All right, let's check out the other side of the truck. There's only one way to open this thing up. You gotta clap. Whoa. <laughs> That's stupid. It's mostly medical and rescue equipment on this side. Down here is the most used compartment of the truck. Tons of first aid. Believe it or not, this is all climbing gear for cliffside rescues. Uh, this has like tons of like carabiners. There's climbing rope in here, 100 foot ropes, belay ropes, lifelines, what have you. In here, they got a bunch of life jackets because Oxnard has five miles of coastline, so they respond to uh, ocean stuff as well. Over here, there's more uh, uh, traction stuff for first aid in case you break a leg or something. This is their uh, wildland uh, survival pack, so they've got shelters in here, other things they need when out on a brush fire out in the middle of nowhere. Right here is the captain's SCBA. These packs have about 30 minutes of oxygen, but when you're working super hard fighting a fire, it's actually more about 15 minutes of oxygen. That's why they have so many tanks. There's the CO2 fire extinguisher and the dry cam fire extinguisher, but the most commonly used one is actually a big water one they have at the front. And then down here, just big buckets of kitty litter, just in case there's like an accident and there need, there's some sort of substance on the ground that needs to be soaked up. And directly above me is all the ladders that this truck needs. There's a 28 foot ladder, a 14 foot ladder, and a 10 foot attic ladder. And underneath the rack, there's a big black hose that they use to suck up water from lakes or pools if there's no access to a fire hydrant. All right, let's check out the panel on the passenger side. All right, so the panel on the passenger side, not as crazy as the one on the driver's side. That's fine. There's still a bunch of inlets and outlets for water to be used, more hoses. Uh, this compartment here has some hardware for the engineer to couple hoses together. This looks expensive. In this compartment here, we have the water uh, extinguisher. It's used for kitchen fires and, uh, you know, fires where water will actually help. Because not every fire gets put out by water. That's what the phone's for. Anyway, I think before we get in the cab, we gotta look at the engine. And to look at the engine, we need the cab lift. Uh, no. <laughs> 
This Aero XT is powered by a Detroit DD13 12.8 liter inline six turbo diesel. It makes about 470 horsepower and almost 1,800 foot-pounds of torque, all sent to the rear wheels through a six-speed Allison transmission. In a vehicle that weighs 40,000 pounds, you're gonna need all the grunt you can get. It's also got a tilt cab, so the engine can be easily accessed for easy maintenance. Remember how on the driver's side panel there's a tachometer so the engineer could see the engine speed? This is what powers the pump in this truck. Power goes through the engine, through the drive shaft, to a transfer case that powers the onboard water pump either taking water from the onboard tank or from the fire hydrant and getting it to the fire hoses so the firefighters can do their job. Now that we've seen the heart of this engine, let's go see the brains. All right. It's a lot harder with all this gear on. Yeah. All right, so here we are, inside a freaking fire truck. The cockpit is actually very driver focused. Got a big switch panel uh, with a ton of uh, labeled lights, like driver side flood, like you can see there. Very cool. Up here, there's, uh, ooh, there's tons of um, roof light. There's a siren button that I'm not gonna touch right now. There's surprisingly, there's air conditioning in this truck, which actually makes sense because I'm very hot right now. There's tons of radios in here as well so the engineer can communicate with the captain. These are actually very noise canceling. I, I can hear my own heartbeat. There's enough room for four firefighters back there and all their gear. Uh, the firefighter seat actually has a locking mechanism for his breathing apparatus so he can sit down in the seat, put the thing on and be locked in and then when he, it's time to go, unlocks and lets him out. The captain has a computer there where he can monitor all the truck's functions. The driver can do that as well. So we got the radio, of course, up here. There's just so much stuff in here. <laughs> of course, the seat belts, they're red, just like a Civic Type R. Uh, this thing's a little slower than one of those. On top of the cab, there are a lot of antenna for communication. One of them is called the AVL, or Automatic Vehicle Locator. The AVL lets dispatch know where all the fire engines are so they can call the closest engine to an emergency. The coolest antenna on there is one that controls traffic lights. They can do it from up to 300 feet away. If they're approaching an intersection, they can make it green so they can get to the scene faster. Side note, flashing your lights at traffic lights doesn't do anything. You gotta have one of those special antenna. All right, so I'm gonna fulfill a childhood dream here. I'm gonna fire up the fire engine. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna rev it or anything, but this is very cool. Turn on that. Got the lights going. Dare I do the siren? I think so. <laughs> hey, you're watching Bumper to Bumper on Donut Media. All right, I'm gonna have to turn this off. Well, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was awesome. Huge mega shout out to our friends at Oxnard FD for hooking us up with this beast. Follow them on Instagram at Oxnard City Fire. These guys are heroes and they're also really, really cool. And today was a total childhood dream come true. This is probably the coolest video we've ever made. Also, major thanks to Oxnard PD for putting us in touch with the rad captains here. And don't forget, be nice. Hey guys, we have new socks on the Donut Media store. They're Mo Powell Baby socks. They're yellow. I love them. Go to donut.media, get yourself some socks. They add five horsepower to your feet. Oh, I get a helmet now. Cool. You run the whole thing back. <laughs> <laughs>
Is that backwards? The hat's backwards. It's not backwards. Well, it's not. Oh, it is. <laughs> I would have looked really stupid then. 